but here comes the push towards B here. I'll talk about it later. Shots finally coming through, and a fatality is finally on board. It's FaZe who strikes first, but an immediate clap back from 100 Thieves. Ethan finds two kills with the Ghost and a nade perfectly placed left. to force them out from behind yellow. You've now got a post-plant scenario with a damaged target in Rockus. Corey by his side, no utility left remaining for the Ray. He's going to have to get a couple kills to pull those paint shells back out. And look at the positions currently set up. You've got this Lurk coming in from under tube. So they're just going to be playing this slow. There's the first shot coming out from the Sheriff long range. Somehow Steel's not necessarily connecting, but he's got them exactly where he wants them. That puts Rockus on the other side of the wall, unable to help out his teammate. And ultimately the round goes the way of 100 Thieves. Knows he has to be careful as that player could be getting close. He's calling in support, but it's not there in time. And that angle is not going to work out so well for the Sage on the high ground. Look at this setup as well. Marv, he's gone full turtle up in that too. <laughs> Currently waiting for the peak to come through. It's a shorty right around the corner. And it's a game of chicken as well. You can hear the Aldron well. coming through, but yeah, he's just waiting. And That's unfortunately, right. they do walk right past. So no dice today. Yeah, sometimes you want to put that wall in behind you so you can fake out the sound and then play close to think that there's nobody playing in two. But now he's going to crunch from behind, and that's it. It doesn't work out, unfortunately. Yeah, that backfired just a bit. 100 Thieves, though. Still at a player disadvantage as they go for spike placement. Over on the B site, there is a recon dart that's sent out. It's not going to spot anything. They're breaking through the ice wall as well, so they can come in from tube. Got Corey, who's currently jiggling back from spawn, doesn't spot one out, and that's Nitro striking first. Hiko spots one, just sees the hip, and now has to be careful. Down to 65 HP, knows they're close. He's relying heavily on his teammate at distance. The SMG not working out so well. A slow orb's going to go down. There's a smoke coming in as well, but he's not sticking the spike. He swings wide. Zachary will end wow. up clutching the round out for FaZe as they steal one away from 100 Thieves to keep things tied up. On how aggressive FaZe has been on the A side, and that's the second time this happens. I love that play from Baby Bay. Just lurking, creeping on in. And that's another early blow for 100 Thieves. They definitely did not want to take steals. Caught underneath tube. You said Uber calls it Harry Potter, a reference to 4 Privet Drive. Harry Potter's residence, of course, <laughs> underneath the stairs. It is a 5-on-2. The number's heavily in favor of FaZe right now. That They do have spike control at least, but obviously you can tell by the equipment that not much can be done. Mm -hmm. And just look at the setup. You've got this super passive play in spawn with their Sova. He's just sitting back in spawn, watching so they don't push backside A. This should be an easy lockdown round for FaZe. Yeah, Hiko's going to try to look for an opening right now too, but they have to start recognizing this for 100 Thieves. Uh, but the, the creep is coming up slow here for the A side. Baby Bay is going to play that spike distance here. on high grounds to make sure that the spike is down. Opportunity here for Ethan. Knows the magazine is potentially dry. But just belt. So FaZe recognizes that, and for two rounds in a row, they push forward for that. That's a player you're going to have to watch out for is Asuna. He's punished by Baby Bay again in an aggressive position. Let's not forget, there's the Sage Res. So there you go. That's a nice little advantage. That's going to cause a peek out coming in from the Knives of Baby Bay, who's found now three kills on the round. His target was brought back to life, resuscitated with the Sage CPR. But he's got no interest in allowing that player to survive any longer. Ethan has made it on the B. A nice little smoke to give him a bit of a one-way on to Corey. The Knives are still oh out, boy. though, as Baby Bay is looking for the ace. Still has some smokes available. Goes for the swing! It's the rifles, because Ethan was able to creep into that B side before. It's just those pole, pulse plants, those mid rounds. That Zachary has been a thorn in her side. Again, Sorry, they are aggressive. Look at this. A, a side presence. They're just pushing so aggressively. You can see that punish from Baby Bay. Marv got one in mid as well. They're giving B site, but they're kind of shifting their resources around. So they play a little bit further back on B, but a way further up on A. That's what allows 100 Thieves to get into these positions, but FaZe is not allowing them to do anything with it. And most importantly, they left the spike. Yep. Can't leave that one behind as Marv. Oh man, look at this again. Baby Bay is so aggressive. 
feeling it. It could be punished, and it is. Not aware that there was a looming threat on the high ground. Now relies upon his team, who's on site. Rockus is playing off on the angle, trying to hide. Will take damage if he falls off that. It's about 15, if I'm not mistaken. Marved. Also falling to the rifle, and there's the 15 damage taken by the Sova. They've got a site control, and more importantly, Nitro has been able to gather up another orb and another player brought back into the fight. It's Asuna, one you desperately want. It's a three on five, a promising look for 100 Thieves. Yeah, and it's a res when they're on a half fire, right? There was a rifle that they picked up from Baby Bay. A couple of them still have pistols. They're just confident that they might be able to take this round because they have the showstopper from the res. So they want to use that to clear space. And it worked. Oh no, it doesn't work. Okay, Faze have turned things around. You've got Zachary, who's full W. He has zero chill. They spot one towards Faze. <laughs> they know the last player's on high. They're gonna try and tap the spike to bait him out of position. It's steel. Goes for actually, it looked like he was gonna go for a reload or maybe even some utility, but gets gunned down through the wall as he goes up the ropes into opposite tube. Two ultimates, which is the res and also the showstopper for 100 Thieves. You're looking pretty good in the gun run right now. Poor face. Oh my gosh, again, look at the aggression! Corey has charged up top. Dude. He's got a nade coming down now. He's gonna die, but that nade is gonna do significant damage. And there's no Sage to bring them back to full health as again, they lost Nitro early. FaZe is just full Wing right now against 100 Thieves. And it's working out way more frequently than maybe it should. Yeah, this is where they're going to start winning like the ability game uh, mid round into the late lurks for 100 Thieves on the executions. Because as they keep dying, like five seconds in a round of how Baby Bay and Corey have been so aggressive, it's going to come down to, okay, well, now we actually have to use utilities at the beginning of the round to try to clear out spots, and they won't have anything left once they get into the sites where FaZe will have a lot more on the retakes. There's the ult being popped, double ults coming out. The knives are pulled as well for Baby Bay. They realize they forced them off the spike, a delay on the third pulse for Rockus just in case. You've still got Baby Bay here. Here's the plant come through, knows that the nades are coming, tries to get vertical. Asuna cuts that play down quick. Nice shots onto Baby Bay. You've still got Hiko in position. The numbers advantage has been turned around. That shock dart's gonna fly a little bit further away as it had a little bit too much juice on it. Recon dart going in to give away positions. Asuna drops off maze just in time. Satchel pack going inside that dark cover. Trying to get up onto the high ground. It's now down to Rockus. They know there's one up top, but there's just not much that can be done. 100 Thieves. They may have lost some early re for Baby Bay and for Corey, but they continue it. Corey's already on the pipes. And again, the challenge right there. We talked okay. about it in the pregame. How are they going to handle an up presence when we knew it would come in from Faze? Faze bread and butter. And Corey, he says, it's cute and all that we rely on the up. We don't need to. I'm here. I got it. <laughs> Four on two in favor of Faze very early in the round yet again. 30 seconds in, and these guys, 400 Thieves, are still at the entrance, pretty much, of ANS. They haven't made it even past the cross of the orb. And that's, again, just the aggressive play from these two duelists for face. Well, Hiko is left standing, and it's never a guarantee when this man's alive in a one-on-many. We've seen him clutch several. Another obstacle, something else to think about for 100 Thieves under development. And if you're looking at the beginning of these rounds, you don't really see that. Uh, okay, so the Aldron actually does come out for his belt. You see how early he has to come out now. Another obstacle. <laughs> <laughs> chuckle, nice chuckle, nice dad jokes. <laughs> I like do it. have a trade out coming in from Hiko, which is huge. There's a wall coming in as well. Big fat paranoia ready to go down potentially. Spike planted. Zachary has already come out from heaven from distance. Great damage coming out, but it's actually nice Hiko, the clutch god, delivering. Now, Ethan is close, and oh, Ethan could get this timing right. And it could actually work out so incredibly well. It's all about patience right now for Ethan, but Ethan actually decides to stay low. Now, that's something that's going to produce a problem. It's the Killjoy this. ult being by Steel to potentially keep them at bay, but it's down to just one player remaining. Now, as the lockdown comes through, there's a wall. Ethan's on the other side of it. Ethan will be able to get one kill, but can't do much to stop it. And it watch the back end. Like with a Cypher or Killjoy, even though Cypher's weak on this map, you have that capability. Flying into the site is Asuna, but there's that player, Baby Bay, with the up on high. A kill comes in towards the end. It's going to be Ethan, and he has been really heating up. Yep. It's down to a one-on-two. Spike is down on the site. 
can't quite tap the shots into the skull of Marv. Which means that they wanted to emphasize a lot on utility, and that's Steel, Asuna to help towards B side, and Hiko with the shock darts to prevent plants on A side. Nice nade coming in. That'll force them to the back side of sight. It's a big fat paranoia to lead them in as well. Now there's a smoke down that Zachary charges through. And they're using the Al drone as well, but it doesn't clear back sight. It actually clears the other direction, and that's what allows this to happen. Ethan, even with the dart in his side as the drone turned back, it doesn't matter. 100 Thieves pick out that one. That's it. Nine I caught four. myself. 9-4. <laughs> Phase. Still have a massive lead. They're coming into this one, saving quite a bit of utility and cash so they can move into that next round with a little bit more oomph. Now, Hiko does struggle against Marv, who just had a classic, and Asuna charges out, and he's oh, like, man. oh my god, there's so many targets. Tries to just keep <laughs> transferring, but wasn't finishing off the kills in the meantime. FaZe just looking to do some economic damage. Corey's actually gotten all the way up into the kitchen. Might be able to get a kill onto Hiko, who's right around the corner on 80 HP, but Hiko's got the placement ready with the crosshair. Now it's all up to Zachary. Do they anticipate a second player in tube? Zachary's actually going all the way over towards the B site. Might actually be able to sneak a plant out of this. Well, he's got to figure it out. He's got a turret that's super close to him, so hopefully it's not... Oh, it's actually going to be on the top B, so he's going to be able to get it. Actually, that's very well done for FaZe with that lurk at the beginning, despite them losing so many players. <laughs> yeah, Seal, that's an easy one to get the kill. But yeah, I, I got to say that 100 Thieves, I do like the fact that Asuna tried to push through that smoke and try to get some information. And as he saw it, you saw a shock that came in from, from Hiko in the back of Boiler. So they still have... You've seen how good he is mechanically. He could technically hold this on his own. Yeah, they transitioned from full hold to retake, but Asuna looks like he wants to take matters into his own hands. The Sage Wall goes down, and actually, there's a gap. He yeah. can get behind this. I'm not sure if they knew that, but it doesn't matter anyway. That's pretty much the round falling apart. The last man standing is Steel, sitting back in spawn with the Ares. And Steel's realizing it's not quite worth it. Turret's going to go down. Oh, maybe not. I guess well, technically he went down. It just did didn't go where down. he wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't go up like he needed it to. Oh, uh, but yeah, as we are actually on this topic of steel, and I wanted to, to touch base on what you were talking about in steel, how how much of a thorn on the side he could be on the defender side. I in the corner, Nitro has to go for this cell field, and it won't even put him back at full HP, and as he swings, it's a double kill for Marv. Corey as well, getting involved in the action, and that's basically the round over yet again. Hiko, the clutch god, what's he got for us? Shock darts coming out. But it's all up to him. The crosshair placement is choice. But he go flushed out by the nade. It's a 1v3 shock dart around the corner. But falling back to his original position. Has to be aware of the bullets that are pouring out through two. Goes for a recon dart. Gets destroyed before a pulse can come out. The shots are already coming. The underside of tube. And they're just going to charge for a split A. And it works out wow. so well. Poor Asuna has been getting bullied this game. As they just charge in, Baby Bay is feeling it right now. Shot after shot to the dome of members from 100 Thieves. And now it's all up to Hiko, who used the ult to try to slow things down, and it didn't really seem to make a difference. With just a classic left, I mean, what, what can you even do? Tube is walled off. Wall. Yeah. Underside's walled <laughs> off. You've only got a ghost, so really, what are you going to do? Nice That's... shots coming out on the barb at least. <laughs> and another one. Hold on. We've seen him win rounds like this before, but it would be the most impressive by far if he was able to somehow pull it off. The positions are going to make it difficult, though, when they do. Flash, or sorry, not a flash. Well, they could do it with, with Zachary, but it's a, a much slower paranoia. But if they're actually going to be able to get like a recon dart and a dash to push Steel back towards spawn, smoke towards spawn, and play that aggressive play style that they usually do, they could overpower the B site quite easily. To Exet, but Immortals is scary right now. Exet's yeah. been playing well as well. I'm not trying to take anything away from them, but based on the way we've seen Immortals play more recently, that is kind of terrifying. Yep. Here we've got a fast play onto the A site that seems to be working out. It's paying off early at least. As you can see, the pick come through the ops not really working out so well. Marved again with a heroic performance as the Sage trying to keep things more manageable, but no. Goes up on top of the wall to play an aggressive play, drops the spike, but it's all going to fall onto Steel, who's now on the flank with an op. Not exactly an ideal weapon, and the first shot comes through 
trying to stop the spike placement. And now they know where he's at. He's got a full kit though, right? Nano Swarm could maybe flush one player out. There you go. He's going to try to get Rockus out of the way. He can put the turret down. But BBB has the off angle. The turret doesn't go wide enough to clear out that position. He wants to peek for the attacker side, but we didn't see that early flash and dash. They're wor working off the Owl Drone, but it's going to be awesome that it pushes out towards the showers and catches Zachary off guard, but did not notice that Marv was just around the corner at showers. Now being picked up, the spike has been planted, and Marv is going to try to come in towards that showers. Thinking is though right now for 100 Thieves, they have a double flank from the Cypher, which is going to be Seal, of course, and Ethan just from behind. Spike is now taking down as Marv is trying to play that false plant for the team. It all comes down to, once again, Hiko. If he could clutch this time a three versus one against two players that's been popping off, and that's Corey and also BB Bay by Marv lurking from behind. Marv now does get a kill from Lurk at Steel, and that push in from that teleporter. They tried to go for that paranoia a little bit too late uh, to try to capitalize on a hit towards the sand. And unfortunately, it doesn't pay off, and Nitro just jumps in. He's like, you know what? I'm throwing a towel. We have a five-on-one now as Hiko, once again, in a clutch situation with only a classic. Good for one at least. That's okay. Here. And they already flanked behind towards that spawn. So BB Bay is at the point. There's that first, but still gets the wide swing. Immediately gets traded out as they are pushing in for phase. But now 100 Thieves has the one-minute advantage. Asuna waiting for this spike to plant. He's waiting for the push through the smoke. It's Rockus. It's punished for it. Remaining. Only a four-on-one remaining with Zachary. A self flash. A first headshot with the Spectre. Picks up the Vandal at 30 HP. But they are closing in on him. You have the shock guards. The peak from Hiko at heaven. Seeing a lot of utility being deplete, depleted for Steel. And the Eldron also comes out. They don't have much left to try to hold this B side. So Steel's going to have to body block. Play that contact. But he gets pinged out. There's that showstopper. But under the window. And also close towards Shed. They catch FaZe off guard. And 100 Thieves are now in the lead with two players. Versus. Or two players ahead, rather. And Rockus jumps out a window. Gets to the Versus the hand of Baby Bay as well to dash in further. What do they do with it? Oh, good God. Hiko with the old. It they just all that. falls apart. <laughs> Hiko gets a triple kill with the hunt. Ethan sees that fault line come through and decides to port out of the way. Baby Bay, in the meantime, gets the punish. Goes to move up further. Somehow able to drop Ethan as well, who is backside of the APC. Sight's lost and is a massive advantage currently. You've got Steel on the lurk, but everything's falling apart. And it's the round win for FaZe. The fault line coming out, the boom bots coming straight for Ethan's position. The recon darts off the money. The explosion, though, is right there in his face. So he's dropped very low on HP. Has to be careful, needs some help. Flying into position is Baby Bay. Knows there's one still on site. The save comes in from Nico to prevent the fatality. The rocket would have gotten a postmortem. But it still is down to one here for FaZe. A 1v2 as the hat comes out. Not going to be able to react in time due to that hat getting tossed out. And it's now down to the one-on-one, -on -one, and Hiko just goes for it. Full says he was taken out quickly by the player still hanging out on site, and Nitro, who's still here, by the way. Yeah. Sitting back towards elbow. I love what Baby Bay is trying to do. Dodging some recon darts as well. There's an ult coming out in the Rolling Thunder. As Baby Bay tries to push into position, Asuna dodges the charges. The flashes are still coming out. And now it's down to one. It's Nitro, the player who originally was playing. Rez to maybe help one of his teammates, but it was dead a little bit too far down for Long B. Rockus catches one on the backside of mid. Look at this setup right now. There's so many players trying to come in from Puka for 100 Thieves. As they start to make their way out, they don't really have the greatest of hardware. And that's going to allow them to line some up. Steal with the Bucky, though. Able to find two pumps. Of 100 Thieves, Corey spots one up on the rafters no over way. towards heaven. How does that work? Ethan just sticks around a little too long, but it's okay. Backup is here, support has arrived, and now it's all up to Marv. Spikes down on the site, and that tiny, tiny little head barely escapes. And it looks like a fast play is going to be the name of the game, and Nitro doesn't stand a chance. The flash from Breach made it so difficult. Miss oh. on the knives, though, goes for the ankles. May have connected, but it doesn't do nearly enough damage. So Hiko's, Hiko is able to survive for the time being. There's the ult being popped from Hiko as well. And we've seen how successful he can be with this one. In the meantime, Marv has snuck out into the cubby. And 
at least grab one kill, but look at the damage that's been dealt, largely due to that ult coming in from Hiko. Shock Dart's coming out long range as well, lands a little high. Recon Dart right next to Steel gives away the position. It's relying heavily on Mar. One enemy remaining. Ethan gets there so fast and they're just not prepared for it. Now there's a smoke going down as well. Rockus is going to play inside it. Has to time this one perfectly. Does have a recon dart. Doesn't want to give away position. Ethan's got the read. It's an unfortunate and Asuna, respectively. It's going to come down to these early duels. How successful are they? And that one works out pretty nicely for them as Ethan gets the execution. Point blank range. And now they're going to peel. So now you're going to see the fallback and go back through the oh, portal no. to A. But the problem is they lost the players on A. So both players, A, Steel and Asuna, who were supposed to pick up the kills, didn't. And now there's a fat paranoia coming into the showers. Everything is falling apart. Yeah, the lurk was coming in for a steal. Now there's no time. They're going to have to rush out and chill themselves in. Now with no time left, it's Zachary that gets important for that setup. Asuna and Steel both died as they went through the port. So at that point, they were already committed. They had to make up their minds and go for it. Nice shots coming out early from Baby Bay on the Marshall, not the off. Nades coming down doing significant damage, and that's what allows Corey to absolutely punish. And again, we're back to that bully state, but it is just an eco round coming in. Phase look. They're going to be moving in fast. There's the nade coming out. Baby Bay again with just a Marshall. Inflicting serious damage, and that nade slows them down so much. They rely heavily on Corey, but with just an SMG against rifles, it's difficult to do much. Oh, Baby Bay again! The Marshal! Nico not able to react in time to Marv's presence One as the trade kill ripped. does come through, and now you've got Baby Bay swapping over to the Vandal. Yeah, if I'm looking at it from this overhead view, it seems as though it's uh, going to be back left. in his hands. There you go. So he's watching it from a nice angle and lands that one onto Nitro. And that's why that matters. Whether or not we were going to see that cross shot. Now he has to be careful as there's players all over the place. He doesn't have Tailwind. So he has camera to go back him. through to get away. He was spotted by the camera. Has to remove the dart. Sight's been lost. And they're going to go for a spike placement. Baby Bay has the knives out though. Oh my nice God. quick flick coming in from Baby Bay. Wants to get oh another no. and he does. Baby Bay finds four of the last players on 29 HP. Fault lined and rocketed. Ethan trying to survive but can't again. Baby Bay with the knife work. Holy. It's become the Baby Bay show. You can see just how impactful Baby Bay can be. Again, aggressive play. The portal play coming in from Marv, backed by the paranoia. Wow. <laughs> Asuna and Steel didn't stand a chance, and a port to get away as well. Yeah, incredibly that, that's well amazing. played. That's amazing. TV towards fun. That's just the most frustrating thing for 100 Thieves right now because they don't have an opportunity to trade. Now Rockets gets another kill here, point. and FaZe is looking great for series point. Hundred thieves One enemy remaining. struggling against this fast pace played by FaZe in the last two maps. Ethan again, the last player stay at team. Mm -hmm. So what does Hundred Thieves do? They try to go for a fast play towards A. The rocket's been pulled. It might actually work out here against this close target. No, it's actually Baby Bay who was a little further away. Steals now back sight. Marv just to keep his head on a swivel. Takes damage from the back, trying to check the other side. And it's a two on three numbers for 100 Thieves. They hear the player coming through from showers. Ethan's not going to miss that one. It's Rockus in a one on three to try and close out the series. Such an important round to win here for 100 Thieves. I mean, it was such a low buy. 400 Thieves facing elimination. I think they had maximum like two ARs into that. On target. Rockus drops into sight, catches Hiko. And suddenly it becomes more manageable. He knows there's a player close. And oh no, not like this. He knows he's got a target right around the corner, but it's Ethan with the swing. You mentioned the potential that Ethan has for this roster and what you see in him. Do you think that Omen is it's yeah. possible? Yeah. Now the dart goes into the portal. No. That's unfortunate. So Corey's able to dodge the damage. And now he's just going to hunker down and wait for the peak. Little does he know there's a player currently sitting on the other side. The shock dart will open up the doors. That's what allows the nade to go in. No! It's blocked. It's like mini golf and the windmill just goes around at the perfect point. Shutting out his opportunity to get that nade. And now he's calling in for... With losing the, the healer at the beginning could make things difficult for Hunter Thieves, but thankfully for them, how they capitalize on a 4-4, they're still at full HP, but the rolling thunder. Now, they did get that ult orb, but... 
What do they do with it? Hiko has the ult. Probably wants to use that for post plant. Now he has to use it on the push, realizing they need to get into the site. There's 12 seconds left. They still haven't secured a plant. Zachary just wants to go for the swing, no. but it's actually Baby Bay to drop him. And now the round is falling apart. It's going to be FaZe who go through as the number.